Brainstorming is similar to some of the other techniques you've heard about. It's another method for generating ideas. Of course, in this explanation of brainstorming, we'll apply the method directly to generating new ideas for solving an engineering problem. The method was created by Dr. Tony McCaffrey, and the process itself takes advantage of individuals and groups. The process allows the participants to work and think independently, and it allows all of the members of the group an opportunity to contribute and find new ideas. It also takes advantage of the group by allowing participants to hitchhike onto other participants' ideas. The method works for top-down or more high-level process thinking members and for bottom-up thinkers or those who think about practical limitations. So let's get an idea of what a brainstorming diagram looks like when it's complete. The final diagram should include the overall goal at the top. As we move downward on the diagram, we can refine the goal by thinking of actual steps towards that goal. And we can re further refine these sub-goals as we work down by thinking of steps towards these sub-goals. As we move up from the bottom of the diagram, we list resources. And as we find sub-goals that require resources available to us, we can connect these to identify connections and come up with new brainstormed solutions. Here's what we'll need for the brainstorming process. First, some sticky notes. These are the materials on which you will write different ideas. We need dark, thick pens or markers so that everyone can clearly read the ideas written on the sticky notes. We'll put all the sticky notes on a large sheet of paper placed on a large work surface with access. And by with access, I mean all participants should be able to move around the diagram to place ideas where they fit. And we also need a quiet space. This exercise is done in silence. Here's what a finished diagram might look like. The overall goal is stated at the top. Each blue rectangle here represents a sticky note with an idea, either a resource or a sub-goal written on it. And we see resources near the bottom of the diagram and goal refinements near the top. You can also see here that some of these sub-goals may have been broken up into sub-sub-goals or other methods for achieving the original sub-goal. Let's look at a real example. There are water bottle filling stations available now in the public. Many are at airports, schools, and public spaces. But more traditional drinking fountains are still installed in other spaces, and many times these are the only drinking water sources nearby. Suppose we'd like to fill a water bottle using one of these stations. Typically, the water spout is placed low and close to the drain level, and the water release doesn't reach a height that makes filling a water bottle easy, or even possible. At some of these fountains, it's possible to partially fill the bottle, but suppose we'd like to completely fill a water bottle using one of these drinking fountains. So the problem is completely filling a water bottle at a traditional drinking fountain. We can word the goal as to completely fill a water bottle at a traditional drinking fountain. We'll start the diagram by placing the goal near the top. So in the end, our diagram will look like refined goals at the top, listed resources near the bottom, and connections identified with solid lines between goals, sub-goals, other goals, and resources. I'm going to talk us through the process of brainstorming, but remember the actual exercise is done in silence. So we've placed the goal at the top of the diagram. So let's start by listing resources. Of course, we have a bottle, we have a fountain, 
Maybe somebody else in the group decides they want to look at sub goals. One way to achieve the goal might be to angle the bottle or to change the bottle shape. Maybe someone else thinks that they could top off the bottle just using a separate container filled with the water fountain water. Someone else might like the idea of changing the bottle shape. They might think of other ways to do that more specifically. One way might be to cut off the bottle top. So we'll make a connection between changing the bottle shape and cutting off the bottle top because cutting off the bottle top is a specific way of changing the bottle shape. Another resource might be your Duke card or your student ID card. Maybe we could change the maybe we could use a different bottle or a flexible bottle. That of course requires the resource of the bottle, so we'll connect those two ideas. Angling the bottle too is a way of using the resource of the bottle. Another way to solve the problem might be to redirect the flow of the water. The bottle lid of course is also available and that's actually a way of redirecting the flow by using the bottle lid. And actually we could redirect the flow using the resource the bottle lid. We could funnel the water, which is also actually a, a way of redirecting the flow. We have a lanyard. Most students using the water fountain would have a phone. They might carry a calculator with them. Maybe they've picked up a paper copy of the Duke Chronicle or the school paper. Most students carry a backpack. Say we have our keys as well for our car or a room or a house. Someone else watching the diagram take form might notice that topping off the bottle with a separate container could be done using the bottle lid. Or actually, maybe it could be done using a friend and their water bottle. Actually, we could funnel the water using the Chronicle. And maybe we could redirect the flow using a lanyard or a string with keys on them. So let's take a look at this final diagram. We have found some connections for sure. And maybe we could find some more if we spent more time with resources or with refining the sub goals. So let's take a look at the solutions that we've come up with. Here's one, we could redirect the flow using a lanyard. We could angle the bottle to try and get more water into it. We could redirect the flow instead by funneling water using a school paper. And there are many other ideas we have found in this diagram. I've talked us through making that diagram but let's watch it take shape more realistically in silence. Here's a photograph of the resulting diagram from having actually completed this exercise with three participants for this exact problem. Just as outlined, we've placed the overall goal at the top of the diagram, listed sub-goals near the top, and listed resources in the bottom section. All along the way, we were making connections. So let's list the new solution ideas we came up with. We've been able to generate seven different solution ideas for this problem. 
Here's one. We could design a flexible bottle. The bottle could squish so that the opening could fit under the spout of the water fountain. Maybe it could look something like this and then expand to a regular sized water bottle. We could angle the bottle to fit under the spout. This is a pretty common solution that a lot of people have tried at water fountains. There's our bottle that we could angle so that the water could tip in. We could cut the top off the bottle and make it more and we could make it more like an open cup. We could fill the bottle cap with the fountain spout and then empty the bottle cap once full into the bottle. We could use a lanyard to redirect the flow of the water. into the water bottle. We could use a paper copy of the school paper to funnel the water into the bottle from the fountain spout. And finally, we could fill the water bottle as much as possible and then ask a friend to fill their water bottle as much as possible, then have them pour their water into your water bottle to top off the bottle. So here are seven new solution ideas we generated with brainstorming. This is a good method that allows participants to work and think independently and quietly, and it gives all the participants the opportunity to contribute and find new ideas. The process still takes advantage of hitchhiking or gathering ideas from multiple people and then using those ideas to inspire new ideas from different people. And it works for both top-down thinkers and bottom-up thinkers. What it does in the end is find new connections or ideas between possible means towards the goal and available resources.